and a, a hybrid contrast like this. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Jarosław Krajka and I come from Poland. I work at university uh, called Maria Kiris Kodowska University after the double tri uh, Nobel Prize winner. And where I deal with uh, English language teacher training and uh, computer assisted language learning. And uh, my presentation uh, is going to uh, talk about the way that um, online teaching in the pandemic era was conducted in the Polish schools. I uh, made some uh, research into the kind of uh, lessons and the kind of the models of lessons, the uh, kinds of activities that were uh, used in Polish schools. And I confronted uh, the practice with some of the theories, with some of the approaches, with some of the phases of call that you can see on the screen. Uh, so it was interesting to see how teachers uh, teach online in the emergency setting. Emergency, because in Poland, the first wave of the pandemic struck us uh, in March, in February, but in March we had a very sudden school lockdown, which resulted pretty much in an overnight shift from traditional teaching to uh, uh, distance teaching. And uh, it was very, and it lasted until the end of the school year, until the end of June. So it was interesting to see how teachers reacted to that, to what extent they implemented uh, different call tools, what models, what uh, uh, pedagogical approaches they followed, what learning models they tried to follow. Uh, so uh, I tried to collect, I collected data on that. And I tried to confront those with uh, the, uh, with different approaches uh, that we have seen in the call literature, with a behaviorist approach, communicative approach, integrated approach, with uh, Web 1.0 versus Web 2.0, uh, and connectability. So this was the first uh, study framework or the study background. Uh, the second was um, the SAMR model, S-A-M-R model, Web 2006. Uh, we wanted to see to what extent those lessons uh, that we analyzed the practice of pandemic online teaching differed from traditional teaching. To what extent teachers were creative, were trying to find their own individual uh, teaching style, and to what extent they tried perhaps to mirror, to imitate the lessons that they would do anyway. That is why. Uh, we confronted the materials collected on the, uh, from the lessons with uh, the uh, SAMR model. Uh, and the third uh, background uh, that I need to quote at this point is the, uh, is the way of uh, building teachers' technopedagogical literacy, uh, building teachers' uh, um, digital literacy. Uh, in Poland, we generally follow the skills pyramid model that you can see with the basic ICT competence built at the uh, beginning of the BA uh, program in English language teaching, then followed with some further cl call classes that would uh, indicate the uh, more specialized tools uh, for teachers to, uh, for future teachers to know how to deal with constraints and possibilities of the medium. Uh, so uh, these two stages were somehow catered for in the teacher education program. So it's interesting to see to what extent this kind of linear uh, pyramid model uh, proved applicable in this kind of emergency uh, setting. Also because it uh, has been criticized to some extent, uh, some authors claim that teachers do not really acquire the skills sequentially, but rather concurrently, that some levels such as specific technical competence and dealing with constraints and possibilities actually merge and it's unrealistic to expect that it's only the teacher who gets to the very top of the skills pyramid uh, will be able to teach online effectively especially that as the experience of uh, the first wave of pandemic teaching showed uh, all of those teachers had to start teaching online straight away 
and they could not wait for the competence to be built up or for the teaching style to be developed. This, sorry, the second point of criticism was uh, uh, Hong's uh, spherical model of co teacher education, which showed uh, that it's not only teacher education as such that influences future success of um, um, technology mediated teaching, but individual teacher factors and contextual factors. And uh, again, the problem that most probably we have had, we will see that in a while. Uh, with uh, call teacher education in Poland uh, was that uh, the contextual factors were taken to a very little extent. Um, so what was the situation? We had the first wave of COVID-19 school lockdown that started very suddenly at the beginning of March and um, all of all people, the whole system was completely unprepared for that. Uh, the schools were unprepared, the students were unprepared, uh, the teachers were unprepared, the ministry was unprepared. Uh, the first two weeks in March uh, were devoted to kind of organization of the whole enterprise, uh, during which teaching was not done synchronously via Teams or Zoom or uh, uh, some other platforms, but rather materials development and delivery was done uh, in asynchronous mode via electronic register systems or uh, email. But from the end of March till the end of June, all schools implemented the emerge of the online teaching, as I call it. And we saw different models. Synchronous lessons were uh, frequent, especially with secondary education and upper primary. For lower, sec for lower primary, uh, digital materials delivery uh, via email, via electronic register book, and asynchronous lessons were used. Then we had some holiday and uh, September and October, two months of face-to-face -face classes uh, in all schools except universities. And since the beginning of November until the present time, we have this kind of second wave of emergency online teaching, second wave of pandemic. Uh, and the prospects are rather gloomy because we have very slow vaccination process in Poland and most probably uh, online teaching will continue for a couple of months more. But the fact that we have those two waves uh, of uh, pandemic teaching uh, also enables us to make some comparison, also enables us to see some development of skills of teachers and the change in the way that, um, uh, that teaching was conducted. So the aim of this study is to gain insight into models of emergency online teaching, to see how teachers in Poland transferred to the online mode, what kind of pedagogical solutions, what kind of teaching style in the online environment they actually follow. In order to analyze this better, there are two frameworks. The framework of uh, this historical phases of call, behaviorist, communicative, integrated, and constructivist on the one hand, and the SAMR model uh, were used in order to see, to try to classify the, uh, the pedagogical solutions they use. Uh, the second main purpose to verify the applicability of call teacher training uh, based on the skills pyramid model. And finally, to compare the ideas for online teaching of experienced teachers, school mentors, and novice teachers, student teachers. Um, the uh, collection of data for this study uh, was done indirectly because it is relatively difficult in Polish schools to uh, access uh, them, observe lessons, especially during the uh, pandemic time. So uh, what was used in this case was that um, uh, student teachers who served the teaching practices were used as the uh, data collectors. They conducted observations and interviews of experienced teachers they also prepared their own lesson plans and digital resource packs. Uh, and these were the four groups of uh, materials that were subjected for analysis. You can see the number of cases uh, that differed because um, student teachers were allowed to, uh, to collect more data in those areas that uh, um, those schools or uh, those meta teachers um, um, simply allowed them to. Uh, we have to be more flexible with 
uh, the organization of practicum in the pandemic mode. Uh, what are some of the uh, results? Uh, first of all, let me talk about the problems in emergency pandemic teaching. Uh, teachers, both experienced teachers and novice teachers reported motivation issues, uh, reported misbehavior issues, uh, turning cameras off, muting microphones, uh, insulting comments, interrupting teacher talk, uh, any other, uh, any other behaviors. Uh, technical issues, of course, and uh, especially the sudden shift, this first wave, so the huge effect of technical uh, uh, issues on uh, the effectiveness of teaching. But teachers also reported a lot of assessment issues, the problems with delivery of feedback, administering assessment or monitoring students' individual work, uh, as well as organizing classrooms, especially if we talk about smaller groupings, pairs, uh, group per work, group work, monitoring students' work in those smaller rooms, and content delivery. Content delivery in such a way that uh, those uh, slower students or those more withdrawn students or less able ones uh, would follow and content um, were delivered in such a way that uh, you can ensure understanding of students. <coughs> Some other problems reported. Physical fatigue uh, of students influencing lessons, even though uh, online lessons uh, were shortened by the ministry from 45 minutes to 30 minutes. But still, physical fatigue, especially in case of secondary schools and um, upper primary schools, was a serious problem influencing the effectiveness of instruction. Uh, greater time consumption. I don't think teachers actually expected that online lessons, that teaching the same activities in the online mode would take much more time than in general. How much time is spent on organizing, explaining on different technicalities. We saw that even today with uh, my, uh, my attempts to enter the conference. Uh, they didn't really expect that great time consumption for material development, uh, digital material development. Uh, and of course, uh, the uh, pandemic teaching showed insufficient student self-management skills. Self-management in terms of managing online learning duties from a huge number of subjects, uh, managing deadlines within different subjects, but also managing their own uh, participation in, uh, uh, in uh, online teaching. Uh, you have to be aware of the fact that it was very often the case that uh, there were home and family problems with uh, access, access to computers, inappropriate behavior of other family members. There were even, even parents who would not allow online learning were reported uh, by uh, the participants of the study. Uh, uh, so just as I said, as far as the models of online teaching are concerned, uh, synchronous lessons uh, were uh, used at upper primary level and uh, um, and uh, um, secondary level uh, and it was mainly asynchronous mode of uh, learning grammar uh, while at lower primary level mainly asynchronous mode of uh, learning grammar and vocabulary uh, was implemented. Whenever synchronous teaching was used, uh, experienced teachers tried to employ pretty much the same model that they would use uh, generally, that is presentation-based mode with the typical lesson structure that you can see very well here. Quite traditional and quite typical, most probably one, the one that they were comfortable with uh, using for a long time. Uh, on the other hand, student teachers, those who were entering the profession, those who were trained, uh, they uh, tried to be more inventive. They tried to use uh, different formats for uh, for uh, lessons. Uh, those that that they were instructed in during the uh, teacher education. Uh, they also tried to develop digital materials uh, using a greater number of applications uh, on supplementing the regularly planned lessons with digital materials, much higher levels of interactivity than experienced teachers. You can see some of those uh, some of those applications here. 
uh, just uh, forgive me, I need to get the charger, otherwise I will get disconnected in a while. classify those different lessons in terms of the uh, models that I uh, presented at the beginning, uh, what we can see is that uh, the easiest solution proved to be substitution. And if you think about that, this is very tricky because people think that it's the easiest solution, substitution, that is substituting, uh, uh, that is trying to mirror uh, traditional instruction in the online mode and trying to conduct the lessons in the way that you are used to. Uh, however, due to limitations of the online mode, due to a uh, much greater time consumption, due to management problems, it turned out that the apparently easiest solution, that is substitution, proved to be much more difficult. Hence, uh, uh, especially student teachers realized that uh, looking for new external tools and trying to enrich this kind of learning experience, in other words, going for augmentation strategy, proved to be uh, more effective, uh, which is why, especially uh, later towards uh, the uh, uh, towards the end of the of uh, this kind of first uh, stage of pandemic teaching, modification of instruction and reformulation of specific parts of lessons, uh, trying to flip the classroom. Uh, uh, started to be more effective uh, strategies. Uh, what about the evaluation of the uh, training model? Uh, right, just as I said at the beginning, this kind of switch to online teaching was so sudden that uh, uh, at the beginning, right after the first lockdown, most teachers were struggling with really basic ICT competence and level two, that is specific technical competence. This showed how inapplicable co-teacher education is, how uh, there is little connection between university education and uh, the teaching practice in this respect. Um, and it's interesting that, uh, uh, that uh, this build-up of skills was not really, really linear. The skills pyramid model uh, didn't work because uh, experienced teachers had their own teaching style, and they, uh, but they didn't have the, the technological skills. So uh, they were at the top in terms of the teaching style, but uh, some of there were gaps uh, in the literacy uh, at those uh, bottom levels. On the other hand, novice teachers, uh, student teachers, were perhaps going slightly more uh, upwards, uh, but still, uh, this had to be very quick, and still this had to be very, uh, very um, uh, effective. So, uh, um, interestingly enough, uh, teachers didn't really show uh, that they went up the pyramid. Rather, they went up and down, depending on the tools and depending on the stage of pandemic teaching as well. So, this shows that uh, this kind of accumulation of skills in a gradual fashion, going from the bottom to the top, is not really uh, effective. Uh, luckily, things have changed uh, when we compare the first wave and the second wave, the first round and the second round. From November until the present day, uh, the emergency teaching experience has resulted in making many language teachers at least partially skilled in those competences that you can see. So uh, classroom management, materials delivery, uh, uh, grammar vocabulary presentation, uh, but also managing communicative teaching, communicative activities, uh, start to be much more effective. Um, so uh, if I am to uh, sum up, uh, that is pretty much the last slide, uh, it's clearly seen that even though uh, some solutions seem relatively simple, that is uh, substitution, uh, without confidence in the new tools, without uh, knowledge of more sophisticated functionalities, 
uh, it is unrealistic to expect more sophisticated forms of learning design, such as modification and reformulation. But substitution doesn't really work because the online teaching situation, the online teaching context changes it so much. And teachers have to realize uh, that it's ineffective to just mirror instruction. Uh, at the same time, uh, it turns out that those approaches that might be uh, might be condemned, might be uh, perhaps um, viewed as uh, as outdated, such as behaviorist uh, uh, style learning patterns, prove to be very effective uh, in the build up of uh, especially grammar and vocabulary uh, 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 knowledge. Uh, some traces of communicative call were also seen in the corpus, uh, but rather few, and virtually no activities that could be attributed to the connectivist approach. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay. So, thank you.